Hello students, wish all of you are fine. I'm your course teacher, Ifata Jahan, and today we're going to discuss about different kinds of uh, disease related to microbes. We already have finished uh, our structure and classifications with their reproduction and their life cycle of different kinds of microbes like bacteria, virus, and fungus. And today we are going to read about different kind of diseases that actually uh, we suffer due to these kinds of viruses or funguses or bacteria. First of all, uh, actually disease can be uh, formed by two kinds. One is foodborne, another is non-foodborne. So first of all, what is foodborne disease? Foodborne disease means any kinds of disease that will be resulting from the consumption of any kinds of contaminated food. That means whenever a disease related to food, that will be foodborne diseases. Normally pathogenic bacteria, virus or parasites that contaminate food and whenever any person ingests that food, then the disease actually happen. And another uh, kinds of disease called non foodborne diseases. These kinds of diseases actually uh, produce in human body uh, due to different kinds of toxins or uh, uh, due to that uh, actually that bacteria or viruses. And for example, virus can affect our respiratory tract. It can affect um, in our bloodstream or blood systems, or in can, it can affect in our nervous system, but it's not related to food. Okay, so it's called the uh, non-foodborne diseases. That is, uh, disease is created, but there is no relation with food. And foodborne, in case of foodborne diseases, uh, we can divide it into two categories. One is infection. It's called a uh, foodborne infection and another is called foodborne intoxication. Foodborne infection means when uh, pathogenic microorganisms uh, containing or contaminating food is ingested in the body, uh, then it's called foodborne infection. Okay, and due to this, uh, for example, food poisoning, you can so say that it's a foodborne infection our normal temperature diseases and in that case uh, maybe um, bacteria can spread out or it can be uh, just presented in your body maybe further it can cause severe infection disease or intoxication diseases it's called the infection process in case of foodborne intoxication it actually caused by by consumption of food that is containing different kinds of toxicant, metabolic body, uh, or poisonous substances. Whenever we that any um, person actually uh, ingests the food, we call that it is a foodborne intoxication. For example, if um, we can think about uh, Clostridium botulinum, it says spore forming bacteria and it uh, actually um, form a spore, uh, it's a botulin uh, that is called the toxin is produced by this kind of microorganism. If that kinds of toxin is present in food and this food is congested or ingested by anyone, then it's called the foodborne intoxication. And it's very much dangerous due to this, uh, anyone can even death if not treated properly. So that is two kinds of classification of foodborne diseases. Then uh, we can also know about the uh, types of food contaminants, okay? Uh, like there are three types of food contaminants like biological, chemical, and physical. And in case of biological contaminants, actually any uh, microbial contaminants like bacteria, virus, fungus, is called the biological contaminants. And in case of chemical contaminants, it's uh, actually any kinds of chemical like toxic metals, uh, pesticides, or any kinds of metals or any kinds of chemicals, it uh, is called chemical contaminants. In case of physical contaminants, it's like uh, any foreign object that accidentally find 
uh, the way uh, find it into the food it's called the physical contaminant that can be visible like here uh, staple pin or staple wire dust these kinds of materials if it's present in food it's called the physical contaminants so if we already know about what is um, actually food borne diseases non food borne diseases with that we also read about uh, types of food borne diseases with different kinds of contaminants now we will know uh, about the diseases that caused by different kinds of microorganism and here i actually added both food borne and non food borne diseases uh, in case of food borne diseases, there will be some food sources that means it's called the food borne diseases, and the disease which is without uh, food sources or related not food that will be non food borne diseases. So, first of all, I think it is botulism. It's a, I already mentioned, it's a spore forming bacteria, it's called Clostridium botulinum and it's anaerobic bacteria and it can produce a neurotoxin which is called botulin and its illness is actually intoxication as it can produce a neurotoxin so uh, it's a very dangerous bacteria and its onset time means uh, the time that you can affect by that bacteria 12 to 36 years symptoms like dizziness double vision difficulty in breathing and swelling and food sources uh, mostly improperly canned food it's actually uh, responsible for these kinds of diseases with that refrigerated food also responsible for this kind of diseases then our second one is e coli infection we know that it's a bacteria e. coli it can produce shika toxin and it's also a poisonous substances it's very much poisonous and um, it's a facultative anaerobic bacteria types of illness like bacterial infection onset time three to eight days symptoms like bloody diarrhea and it can from that it can be failure of kidney food sources like undercooked ground beef and pasteurized apple juice or not properly uh, cooked fruits and vegetables from milk or dairy products also responsible for these kinds of infections then another is salmonellosis uh, the bacteria actually mainly responsible for that is salmonella bacteria and it's a facultative anaerobic bacteria uh, and it's mainly happened due to fecal contamination like for example uh, egg is very much a resource of salmonella bacteria uh, due to uh, actually it's um, it contain in a shell that kinds of bacteria and symptoms like stomach cramp diarrhea headache nausea vomiting this kind of symptoms is related to that. Food sources like soil, um, insects, raw meat, or raw salad dressing, sliced fruits and vegetables, and raw, actually raw salad, and uh, the soil, insect, these kinds of materials actually mean responsible for uh, salmon losses. Then another one is called pulmonary tuberculosis. It's a pathogen-like mycobacterium tubercular, and it mode of transmission, airborne and droplet infection. By the, both way, it can affect the human body in duration period two to ten weeks. And symptom like uh, coughing that lasts three or more weeks, and sometimes it's uh, just a blood with coughing then chest pain or pain with breathing or coughing unintentional then weight loss fatigue fever night sweet chills loss of appetite all the things are related to pulmonary tuberculosis then another disease uh, related to bacteria is called plague uh, it's uh, like uh, pasteurella pestis the pathogen name and mode of transmission like indirect and inoculative and it's uh, it can be actually transmitted from rat and incubation uh, period two to six days symptom like uh, fever and chills headache and muscle pain abdominal pain and diarrhea nausea and vomiting extreme weakness with that uh, it can be bleeding 
blood may not be able to clot or saliva and mucose or boost that materials is actually uh, present in lungs with the trouble in breathing or fever, chest pain, overall actually weakness filled by the patient. Then another kind of uh, disease is gonorrhea. It's a sexually transmitted disease. It's caused by the bacterium uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. And mode of transmission, actually sexual transmission, incubation for two to 10 days. Symptoms in men. Uh, right, burning when uh, pee, painful or swollen uh, testicles, white yellow or green discharge from uh, penis. Then symptoms in women like uh, the same as men, burning or pain when pee, bleeding between periods, and vaginal discharge. Then uh, it is very much typical in case, that case of gonorrhea disease and pain can be uh, felt in belly with that uh, pain also can uh, feel in during uh, intercourse of sex that was actually a disease uh, that causes by bacteria foodborne and non-foodborne both are presented there then another kinds of disease that caused by virus First of all, that is uh, now we are mostly affected by that. It's a very pandemic. We're suffering from pandemic situation due to this virus. That disease is called uh, SARS-CoV-2. That is severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2. And virus is called COVID-19. Symptoms is like fever, cough, shortness of breathing or difficulty breathing or with that tiredness, runny nose, sore throat, is all are the symptoms of COVID-19. Then rotavirus, uh, it's actually uh, affected especially uh, the children, small children, and uh, sometimes it can be infant also. And uh, the virus actually uh, is like rotavirus gastroenteritis and symptoms like vomiting, low-grade fever, watery diarrhea, and transmission uh, like a person to person spread through contaminated hands. Then uh, another very dangerous disease uh, by virus is called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS. It's mainly caused by the virus, it's HIV or human immunodeficiency virus. The main function of that virus, it attacks the immune system making people uh, actually more vulnerable to infectious and diseases and it uh, destroy infect and destroy certain white blood cell that is called CD4 plus and the last phase of HIV infection is called AIDS. Symptoms of AIDS like uh, fever, sore throat, headache, muscle ashes and joint pain, swollen glands, skin rash, there's uh, some symptoms are AIDS, is the early symptoms. Uh, HIV will also become asymptomatic. How it is? Uh, after the early stage, actually, um, an infected person may not show the symptoms again. Okay. Uh, during this time, actually, the virus uh, damage more immune system and organs, but it is asymptomatic. And the last stage of uh, AIDS is actually AIDS. And later stage of HIV infection, if it is untreated, it's uh, very much uh, uh, dangerous for anybody. And the latter stage of uh, HIV infection, like swollen lymph nodes, extreme tiredness, weightless, fever, night sweats, it's are the other symptoms of AIDS. Then another uh, actual disease is called chikungunya, which is uh, happened by the virus family called Tugoviridae. The symptoms are like pain, joint pain, rashes, or muscle pain, joint swelling, like that. And if you go for treatment, there is no treatment of that virus till now. And if anyone takes some prevention, like drink fluid, plenty of rest, and uh, prevention of mosquito bites as it is actually spread to with mosquito so they can uh, actually feel better from that or not affected by that 
another uh, is disease that is uh, very much actually we can see or suffer in our country that is called dengue and it's also uh, actually spreaded by one another kinds of mosquitoes called the aedes and uh, the family actually responsible for that is called Flaviviridae and uh, dengue symptoms like all flu-like symptoms like fever, nausea, joint pain, vomiting, skin rash, these kinds of symptoms actually. And in case of any other viral diseases, uh, for dengue fever there is no specific treatment and it's that you will take rest or drinking plenty of fluids and aspirin should be avoided, these kinds of uh, uh, this kind of remedy we can take and during uh, so during preventing or from preventing from the uh, dengue disease or whenever we suffer from dengue, uh, dengue. and another uh, kinds of diseases called viral hepatitis uh, there were actually uh, five types of hepatitis you can see a b c d and e but uh, well known are or mostly affected by these three a b and c hepatitis a actually a foodborne disease it's spread uh, by food contaminated food or water and it's an acute form of uh, hepatitis but B and C are very much uh, dangerous and it can, it's a chronic stage of hepatitis and uh, symptoms like zombies, feeling tired, stomach ache, nausea, fever, headache, all the things actually we can see in our viral hepatitis. So we have read lots of diseases from virus. Uh, now it's time for fungi. Uh, fungi also uh, causes some diseases like uh, fungal meningitis, um, causes our cryptococcus or blastomyces. It's signs symptom like uh, fever, headache, nausea and vomiting with that photophobia. That means eyes uh, are very much sensitive to light. And it also can alter the mental status of any patient. The second one is ringworm. Actually, it's uh, we know that it's like uh, look like that, and approximately uh, 40 different species of fungus can cause that. But uh, some, uh, some some groups or some family that are responsible, like trichophyton. Uh, Mycosporum or uh, epidermophyton, these kinds of groups actually related with the uh, causing of ringworm, like symptoms, itchy skin, ring shaped rash, hair loss, or uh, it actually appears between 4 and 14 days after the skin comes in contact with that kind of viruses. The another uh, disease that is uh, very well known in our country that fungal nail infections. Uh, in that case, uh, a group of fungi called uh, dermatophytes or candida is responsible for this kind of infection. Symptoms like discolored thick or frazzle or packed nail. And uh, normally it's not so much dangerous until it becomes severe. Then these are some diseases that is caused by actually food source. <clears throat> Sorry, you can also say that uh, they are foodborne diseases of fungus, like first of all, aflatoxin, uh, that is uh, isn't called aspergillus flavors. And this toxin actually can found B1, B2, Z1, G2, these kinds of uh, toxin actually found in food. But B1 is the most common, toxicity like 0.5 to 10 milligram per kg. If you take in like that, then you will suffer from this disease. And disease are uh, that can convert to deeper cancer, chronic hepatitis, jaundice, cirrhosis, this kind of disease we can check uh, by uh, ingesting these kinds of toxins. Food sources like peanuts and peanut butter uh, with that. Which will see such as cotton seeds, uh, if that is rancid, and we take that. These kinds of uh, foods actually responsible for aflatoxin. Then petroli, uh, it's another kind of toxin, is in like aspergillus clavatus or penicillium expansum, and provisional uh, maximum tolerate uh, daily 0.4 microgram per kg, and they are very stable and not 
still uh, destroyed is delivery pasteurization uh, but they are not so much toxic uh, actually that no documented accurate toxicity but um, people can affect by taking this toxin from different kinds of food borne infections food source like apple and apple juice pears grapes uh, sweet seeded all things are related to these kinds of disease and our last one is food caused by uh, parasites and these other kinds of disease that cryptosporidiosis it's actually uh, this disease caused by parasites named uh, cryptos cryptosporidium and it may be found in soil food water or any kinds of uh, contaminated place uh, that uh, these kinds of parasites are actually found and it's spread it mainly by blood okay symptoms uh, normally begin to detain this after being infected uh, and the symptoms like diarrhea dehydration nausea vomiting weight loss another is uh, called uh, cyclos Oryesis. It's actually foodborne disease of parasites like symptoms, infections that infect the small intestine, what a diarrhea, loss of appetite, bloating, or low grade fever. All things are related to uh, this uh, disease. And food source actually berries, lettuce, fresh herbs, these kinds of uh, foods actually responsible for, responsible for this disease and parasites like Cyclospora mm, catenesis. And our last one is uh, gear diesis. It's uh, actually one another kind of parasite like gear deer, diodenials, and it's a single cell microorganism or you can also sell it's one kind of protozoa actually, food source like undercooked pork, and the symptoms like diarrhea, stomach cramp, nausea, all of these actually related with these types of diseases. So we have read actually uh, so um, lots of diseases related to bacteria, virus, fungus, and parasites with foodborne and non-foodborne diseases. We'll discuss more in our next class. Thank you.